Fat is actually where we get most of our energy during rest and also low intensity exercise. So let's go ahead and talk about fat and fat metabolism here. So what is fat? Fat is simply a molecule, a lipid molecule that combines glycerol and fatty acids into something our body can get energy out of. When we break down fat in our bodies, we can get 9.4 kilocalories per gram of fat. The process of creating fat is called lipogenesis, and uh, we can do that from various different sources. So proteins, carbohydrates, and fat uh, consumption can all lead to lipogenesis. Uh, so overconsumption of any of that does lead to fat production. Um, our body's primary way of storing fat is actually through triglycerides. So um, most of the fat in our body is triglycerides in our primary places where we store it. It's going to be our muscle and adipose tissue, um, which is what's listed down here. So we get somewhere around 60,000 to 100,000 kilocalories worth of fat in our adipose tissue and just a typical young, healthy man. And so um, we get around 3,000 kilocalories of fat that is sort of spread throughout our muscles and stored within our muscles, also again in a typical young man. And as I already mentioned, the triglyceride molecule is where we get most of our energy for rest and light intensity exercise. There are other uses for fats and lipids besides just bioenergetics and production of energy. Um, the production of steroid hormones, which is uh, hormones that are derived from cholesterol lipids, um, is going to also require fats uh, or lipids. Um, and so examples of that would be testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, and there are many more as well. And also all the cells of our body are have a bilayer, bilayer lipid membrane. So we need lipids and fats in our body in order to produce those. The breakdown of triglycerides in order to uh, get glycerol in three fatty acid molecules is called lipolysis. So anytime we want to use the triglyceride molecule in order to make energy or do anything else with it, we need to break it down again through lipolysis. So just to quickly look over this one more time, here's an example of a diagram of a triglyceride. We have the glycerol in our three fatty acids attached to it. We need to have some water, so three you know, water molecules in order for this to happen. We have the enzyme lipase, and that's going to help split this up into again the glycerol in the three fatty acid uh, molecules. The glycerol molecule, uh, this one here, uh, that's the structural backbone of the triglyceride. It's not a waste product. We can use it. Um, obviously, we can use it to reproduce uh, triglycerides. We can use the glycerol molecule in glycolysis in place of glycerol to hide 3 phosphate in order to create th uh, 19 ATP molecules from a single glycerol molecule. So it's uh, it can be used for energy directly. Um, it can also be converted into glucose through gluconeogenesis um, that will create a glucose molecule that can then go through glycolysis um, that way. So again, the glycerol molecule is not a waste product. We can use it for various different things, including energy production. The fatty acid molecules, um, these are the single lipid units that are energy containing lipid units within the body. So these are eventually going to go into beta oxidation where it breaks down the fatty acids within the mitochondria into acetyl-CoA in order to make ATP. This slide overviews the breakdown of fatty acids through aerobic metabolism. So fatty acids are, uh, first of all, transported through the blood bound to albumin, uh, primarily bound to albumin. And um, it's eventually brought into the cell, um, shown here in this diagram, through specialized transport proteins um, that allow the fatty acid to come in. Once the fatty acid is inside the cell, it is converted into its activated form of fatty acetyl-CoA, um, in an energy intensive process that actually breaks down one ATP molecule um, and turns it into ADP, using that energy again to make the fatty acetyl CoA. The fatty acetyl CoA can then enter the mitochondria. So, this is where we're finally getting into the mitochondria, and it enters it using the carnitine shuttle. Once the fatty acetyl CoA molecule uh, gets into the beta oxidation cycle, it's going to pull off two carbon molecules per cycle um, and convert those into acetyl-CoA where it can be uh, thrown into the Krebs cycle and used during aerobic metabolism. I've already done a video talking about the Krebs cycle and electron transport chain aerobic metabolism. I'll put a link in the description below um, this video to that video to, if, in case you haven't seen that already. All right, so 
But this process, this beta oxidation process of removing two carbon uh, molecules is going to keep happening over and over and over again until there are no carbon molecules left to remove from the fatty acetyl-CoA molecule. And there can be several carbon molecules in one of these molecules. So um, this process can happen several times over, producing a lot of energy eventually. Once the acetyl-CoA gets into the Krebs cycle and it goes through the normal Krebs cycle process, uh, we're gonna end up getting NADHs and FADH2s. The NADHs and FADH2 molecules produced in the Krebs cycle will then uh, make their way into the electron transport chain where they get used up to produce a lot of ATP. All right, so much more ATP from fat than what you're gonna get from carbohydrate. So I'll put a link in the description below to that video where I described the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain in a lot more detail, which is the two aerobic pathways that um, beta oxidation is feeding into. Um, I'll also put a link in the description below to a video where I talk about glucose breakdown um, because these two things, the fat and the glucose, uh, are our primary energy sources that our body uses, especially during exercise where there's a sort of a progressive shift from fat to glucose.